Welcome to Embedded Insiders. I'm Laura Dolan. This is Brandon Lewis. This is Richard Ness. Alex Paul. Hi. Well, here we are with another video version of the Embedded Insiders. Uh, yeah, and, I'm uh, going to pick up when we left off last time, okay? What's last time? That was months ago. Yeah. The Chachki oh. Report. Okay. The Chachki Report. I got, got fruit snacks. <laughs> okay. Guess what Brandon got? <laughs> oh, I got, a, I got an ECU t-shirt. Bad in computing design, straight from Nuremberg. Yeah. Laura got a new laptop. laptop. I did get a new laptop. This is, this is legit swag right here. Yes. <laughs> and Alex got a new, got a new, new jacket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so in, in timeliness, uh, I just saw something on the news this morning that they're blaming uh, these Boeing crashes on a software issue. Oh, I was still under the impression that it was all the pilot's fault. Well, the pilot error. it's the autopilot's yeah. fault. Well, okay, I think there's a legitimate uh, question about the autopilot's fault yes. and the pilot's fault, Absolutely. but it's a training issue. It's not that yes. the pilots are being malfeasant. It's not like the pilots Correct. are wrong. No. The pilots were under-informed. Although Boeing did come out and express that they thought that any errors that were happening, the pilots should have been able to overcome, at least at one point. But have you heard that they actually released the transcript from the Ethiopian flight? The pilots spent literally the last moments of their lives trying to figure out what the problem was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Looking at a paper manual. Exactly, which means oh if they had the time God. to dig through a paper manual, right. if they had had the proper training, they would have had the solution. Because if they had the time to dig through a manual to look for the solution, right. if they'd been written in the manual, they would have found it. Yeah. But, but let me go back to where we started. It was the software that malfunctioned that actually caused the initial problem. You were about to say, Brandon. I saw you say about to, but no, I, you, you. Let me I, jump I, in. I know your, I know your position. I'm champing at the bit. Yes. Um, I, I agree with you that it's a software problem. You're champing and not chomping. I believe the term's champing. Okay. I mean, we have to champing. look it up later. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to be clear on that. <laughs> but. Um, he forgot he was going to say. No, no, I remember. <laughs> I just want to phrase it properly because yes, the software is a problem, but I do believe a problem or the problem a problem because I do believe there's a hardware component in this. Okay. Um, not to cast aspersions on the Ethiopian Airlines maintenance teams and the like, but I think it's uh, interesting that one could say arguably that in a maintenance routine that does not include the sensor involved. It's potential that that sensor could maybe claw. Maybe there's a marginal issue with that sensor that doesn't appear under normal maintenance schedules. But what if it gets clogged easily? Or what if there's an issue under certain atmospheric circumstances and it gives bad data to the software? So yes, the software is wrong, but it's being keyed by a failure in the sensor. But you also have to you have to take into account that a lot of these sensors are going to have redundancies. Firstly, and in 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 many cases, it's the responsibility of the software to account for potential. You know, misreadings or, or failures no, in general. Yeah. Of, but remember the, the frequency of error. I mean, this is over two years. How many thousands, probably tens of thousands of no, flights? Six months. Two, two crashes in six yeah, months. It was six months. When was that, October? No airline in history has ever had two crashes in six months on a new airliner. Yeah. That's a bummer. Yeah. That's, why they grounded, that's why they grounded them, because it was happening. I mean, it was just too, too many. So. And, and in this system, to address your point, Brandon, it's the only sensor. There is literally only one sensor in the mm -hmm. system. There's no redundancy at all. Mm -hmm. So if that sensor has any issues, and the software has any issues, right. it's going to bring it down. So, so because because nowadays so much is software defined, and you rely so heavily, especially if you don't have a redundancy, right? Would that necessarily make the issue a software issue? It's a hardware failure, but a failure also of the software, which is the backup, is the redundancy. I call that a system failure. True. That's a cop out. No, I mean, if you're looking only at the software... It's a complete system failure at that if, point. If you're looking only at the software and there is, however minor, a hardware issue, that means it's a ticking time bomb, and the next time that those circumstances happen, that sensor fails. But it, isn't it the job of the software to compensate for the faulty hardware? Well, if my software patch is saying, ignore the sensor, I don't know if it's how complete the software patch is. You know what I'm saying? It's not like the sensor, it's not like the software's pulling in additional information from a secondary backup sensor. Basically, to me, thinking about that situation, if I have a bad sensor, I'm getting bad sensor input and I'm fixing it in the software, I'm telling the software, ignore that sensor. But aren't you mm -hmm. focusing a little too much on that very specific thing? The pilot should have some simple override. 
They do. Right. And that was part of the training. They could have flipped, they just turned off that system with one flip of a switch and they would have solved them. Well, there were problem. other pilots that did say when they turned off autopilot, then it corrected the problem because the nose of the plane, they felt it going down. Mm -hmm. And when they turned off autopilot, it evened back out again. Exactly. So I don't know why that's not a simple fix. Like what, what is it with the autopilot that's malfunctioning? The software. <laughs> <laughs> so are, are we back to blaming the pilots? I would say we're back to blaming pilot training as part of the problem. Brandon, are you blaming the pilots? I, I'm still blaming the software. Um, <laughs> that's just me. The way, the way that I think of the system design these days is that it's the responsibility of the software to compensate and at least send some sort of uh, failure, failure or alert um, to, to keep the plane grounded. So that's my position. Would you fly in one of those planes today? After, after you. No, I'm getting serious. No. Well, they're all grounded right now, so we can't. Yeah. Well, if yeah. it was. But but to be but to be completely honest, as a as a normal commuter, um, okay. I probably would once 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 it's. You probably I trust, did. I, uh, you yeah, I probably did. I, I trust you know I life. I blindly trust the, the FAA, um, like millions of people every day. So yeah. But and I think that brings up a bigger issue. Um, there are a lot of systems out there that people blame the software, and it may not be just mm -hmm. the software. Right. In the but people think that it's the software's job to fix the Correct. bad hardware. Correct. Well, but then again, by that argument, then everything should be fixable by the pilot, because isn't he or she the ultimate software in the, <laughs> uh, <laughs> in the system? Well, I think on the, in the last episode, we talked about how these machines are talking to the machines, and you can just exclude human intervention completely. Well, then that's a separate question. Instead of asking the question, would you get on a plane that may have had troubles, would you get on a plane that's 100% autonomous? Aren't most planes 100% autonomous anyway, really? We just have, it's, 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 sort of, it's sort of like, it's sort of like subway have, cars they, now, right? They have well, the ability pilot, to be. Right, right, but a pilot right. landing in a crosswind is 100% pilot. Mm. And actually, I really like it. You know that it's 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 sporty, but it's not like life threatening. So they like landing in a crosswind. It's supposedly interesting for them as pilots. But then I could be wrong. But that's what I hear from other pilots. So are we at a point today where we're basically for ninety nine point nine percent of of piloting an aircraft, where we basically have human pilots there for our own human peace of mind? Well. Back Maybe that 80, up. <laughs> Would you get in a complete autonomous car and go on the highway? Would you sit in the back seat of a car with, without a driver? Well, I, you doing well I, I, te I technically, 80, 80 I, 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 I technically have done it without someone manning the steering wheel on the highway. Yeah, which vehicle? It was a Toyota. Um, I think it was a Prius. It was out at uh, CES. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wait a sec. You fit in the back of a Prius? <laughs> Barely. So yeah, is a technical feat. You know, about a hardware problem. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, I, I think a lot of that, a lot of that is today. Um, humans feel more comfortable with other humans there. You better um, believe it. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, what we're used to. Actually, Robert Heinlein, famous science fiction author, touched on it very lightly in his famous book Friday, because in it, it was suborbital aircraft. So basically, you know, you're right. in New York to New York to Perth right. in two hours, and, they, and 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 in the book he points out how you're talking about suborbital. They, they have, if they don't have clearance before they take off, mm -hmm. there's going to be a wreck somewhere. So the humans aren't even in it, but they're in the book he points out there's still a pilot in the front of the vehicle because people want that assurance. Yeah. They assume that the pilot's going to magically just grab cables from the walls right. and steer the plane. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean they're not. <laughs> Well, that wasn't the right stuff back when they had cables. That's right. So if it is a software issue then, um, what could have been done better, do we think? I mean, we obviously don't know the, well, the ins and outs of the code at this point. But, but it's so complex and there's right. millions and millions of lines of code in these planes. Mm -hmm. How in that world would you pinpoint? Well, but then it becomes a customer yeah. issue. The moment you have a problem, there shouldn't have been a debate about pulling the planes. Right. No. Once upon a time, there was never a debate. Right. right. They would just pull the planes. Mm -hmm. And I recognize that there's a lot of money involved, but... Bingo. You know, yeah, That's but when, when it's my button the plane, I don't care how much it costs. Right. Yeah, but to a bean counter, your your life has a, has a, a value, and they can tell you what that right. value the is. The insurance payout for the, for the catastrophic... Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, well, but it. then again, but then that, that also brings the question to the larger engineering community, right? Because we're trying to draw some parallels here for our audience. There are problems in the development process sometimes that can be very painful and expensive. Do you try to paper over those problems or do you stop, step back, and spend the time and money to fix that problem? I think next week we bring on one of these software experts. Yeah. yeah. That is a great Definitely. idea. Ask this question. Yeah, I agree. Cool. Well, that it? ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what you're talking about gentleman side, but I'll okay. take the nod. You know? I'm Rich Nass. Brandon Lewis. Laura Dolan. Alex Paul. Thank you for We're joining us. We're Insiders.